in the ESC Heart Failure Guidelines 2016, it was very much a staged approach where we also considered reaching target dose before we add the next medication if a patient still has symptoms, reaching target dose again, and then adding the next medication. What was wrong with that? Well, first of all, we learned it takes a very, very long time. In fact, it can take months to get to target doses if we do it like that. So, it doesn't happen in practice if it takes so long and, and is so, so manual and requires so much work. So that was the other thing. And then we started to realize that the benefit obtained with these medications occurred very early after starting these medications in the trials. So we're talking about within weeks to months and therefore we're actually depriving patients of potential benefit as we delay and delay. And then of course it's because we got so many positive trials in heart failure and we should celebrate that because the residual risk in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is still very high. We must not get complacent, so we do need still more medications. But suddenly, we got many, many different positive trials which did not follow the sequence. So, for example, we had in the Victoria trial, Verisigua added to triple therapy but not quadruple therapy with an SGLT2. Similarly, the SGLT2 trials did not have verisiquat as a baseline therapy. So we, we lost our ability to just follow the trial in sequencing drugs. And that's why our 2021 ESC heart failure guidelines have provided the destination rather than the way to get there and emphasize the importance of getting and covering the bases with all four of ARNI beta blocker, MRA, and SGLT2 inhibitors. So target effects rather than a target dose. When we refer to worsening heart failure, what we're saying is we have a patient who already was diagnosed with heart failure, already got started on some medications so that the risk decreases, but then despite being on some medications, continue to get worsening symptoms and signs that require escalation of the therapy. So it's important to recognize this as almost breakthrough of the current therapy and not just a patient who's congested and needs diuretics. We need to understand it means the current medications are not keeping that patient at this level of risk, but the risk is increasing and we need to do everything we can. I want everyone to understand that even with the quadruple foundational therapy, the residual risk is high in DAPA-HF even in the treated population with ARNI, beta blocker, MRA, and dapagliflozin, one in seven still had the primary outcome during the follow-up. So there's still a residual risk, right? And the ones with worsening heart failure are the ones that are high risk. And this is the population that was addressed in the Victoria trial. The Victoria trial tested Verisiguat against placebo in patients with HEFREF and a recent worsening event, so high risk. And why? It's because we feel a new mechanism of action is needed in these patients who are worsening despite being on background therapy. And this new mechanism of action is stimulating the production of cyclic GMP. You see, the nitric oxide cyclic GMP axis is not working well in heart failure. And there's a reduction in nitric oxide bioavailability and reduction in cyclic GMP. So Verisiguat is very unique in that it is a soluble guanylase cyclase stimulator. It stimulates the production of cyclic GMP. 
very different from the neurohormonal blockers that block all the bad things, you know, angiotensin and um, um, aldosterone and so on. So this one is stimulating a good enzyme. So it's, it's um, very exciting that we have this new medication. Victoria, which is the large phase three trial, randomizing patients with a recent worsening heart failure with reduced ejection fraction event, was a large positive outcomes trial. So in this more than 5,000 patients, Verisiguat reduced the risk, the composite of heart failure, hospitalization, or cardiovascular death by 10%. Now, the 10% is a relative risk reduction. But remember I said these patients with worsening heart failure are at very high risk. And so the baseline risk is already high. And if we look at the absolute risk reduction and calculate the number needed to treat, it is only 24. So it is a significant absolute risk reduction, we only need to treat 24 such patients to prevent an important event like heart failure, hospitalization or death. And the important thing is it did it safely. Um, it's a once a day oral medication, requires some up titration which was very well tolerated. More than 90% of patients in Victoria were very successfully up titrated. There was a concern, of course, for potential hypotension and particularly symptomatic hypotension or syncope, which were adverse events of interest, were thankfully very uncommon and also not, very, not significantly different between the arms. When we looked carefully at the blood pressure change, indeed, during the titration phase of the first four weeks, there can be a small dip in systolic blood pressure, but usually patients can type through and still be maintained on the blood pressure safely. And we're talking about even the most elderly patients, even on those on concurrent ARNI, even with those with a systolic blood pressure at baseline of less than 110. So in summary, uh, Victoria gave us a, a completely new weapon in our armamentarium for worsening heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. I think that we need to take the risk in these patients seriously, always ask ourselves what more we can do. So don't just diurese them, optimize the foundational therapies and go further and ask, is this a patient who's suitable for very sick one?